You're walking home after a long, exhausting day at work, when suddenly it starts to rain. And of course, you're completely unprepared. No umbrella, no raincoat, nothing. But then, you see your house in the distance, and you ask yourself, should I walk and stay in the rain longer? Or should I run and crash into even more raindrops from the front? People have been debating this for decades. And after living in Ireland, where rain is basically a personality trait, I found myself in this situation a lot. So, let's finally answer it. Is it better to walk or to run in the rain? When you move, the rain hits you from above. But contrary to what we might think, the amount hitting your head doesn't change with speed. This is the volume of rain that hits you from the top if you're standing still. And this is the amount of rain when you start moving. As you can see, you'll receive some amount of water on each point along the way. So when we combine all together, you'll end up receiving the same total volume of rain as if you were to stand still. Now, here's where speed matters. If you stand still, the rain from the top is all you get. But once you start moving, you'll also run into raindrops from the front and you'll get more wet. So if you're standing still, you're wet from above. But if you move, you're wet from above and the front. Seems like not moving was the correct solution all along. But obviously, standing still literally doesn't get you anywhere. And you want to be back at the warmth of your home as soon as possible. So you've got to get moving. On the route from where you are to your house, the total amount of rain you run into from the side has nothing to do with how fast you're going. Imagine the raindrops frozen in the air as a big block of water. When you move through it, you'll hit the same amount of rain regardless of your speed. It's like a snowplow. Whether it's going slow or fast, it clears the same amount of snow from the road. The thing is that, even when this sounds reasonable and all, you probably remember that Mythbusters episode where they analysed this exact situation and seemed to reach the opposite conclusion. But before that, I've been getting comments asking how I actually make these videos, especially the research phase. Well, for that, I've been using a tool called UPDF for quite a while now. So imagine my surprise when I reach out to them to sponsor this video, and they actually said yes. Let me show you some features that have helped me develop this video you're watching. UPDF is an all-in-one PDF editor that's actually enjoyable to use. It's fast, customizable, and now powered by AI with GPT-5 and DeepSeek. You can chat directly with your PDFs, ask it to summarize, explain, or even turn your research into a mind map. It's basically like having your own mentor inside your notes. And it's not just AI. You can edit, read, and organize your PDFs. And if you're organizing tons of files, their new batch tools lets you compress, watermark, and protect multiple PDFs at once. It's also great that UPDF works across all your devices. I've been using it primarily on my Windows PC and also on my iPad with iOS using one single account. So if you're a student, researcher, or just someone who deals with tons of PDFs, they gave me an exclusive discount for everyone if you use the link in the description. And look, it's totally risk-free because if it ends up not working for you, they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So yeah, huge thanks to UPDF for helping me in my research process and also for supporting this video. Now, back to the experiment. So, what's with it? In their initial experiment, Jamie and Adam built a 100-foot, or in non-freedom units, 30.5-metre indoor corridor with carefully controlled artificial rain. They had subjects walk and run, then weighed the water absorbed by their cotton jumpsuits, and their initial conclusion seemed definitive. The runner would get 5 to 13 grams more wet than the walker, this seems to directly contradict our theory, doesn't it? Well, not necessarily. Since their experiment was conducted under really controlled conditions, it cannot be taken as definitive, but it sure shows that this problem is much more complex than it appears at first glance. In fact, years later they decided to revisit the experiment, 
and the moment they took the experiment outside, in actual wind and real rain, the result flipped. The runner stayed way drier. Obviously, this is not the only experiment done in this field. In 1996, a pair of British meteorologists once tested it too. They stood 100 meters apart during a proper British downpour. One walked, one sprinted. When they compared their clothes afterwards, the runners were almost 40% drier. That's quite a substantial difference. But a few American physics professors weren't convinced, so they ran their own test, indoors, with mannequins. They timed how long they took to get soaked. They even changed the speed of the mannequins each time. And the result? Still confusing. The result was more balanced, but not conclusive. Running helped, but sprinting too fast started to make things worse again, mostly because of splashing and turbulent airflow. And more recently, researchers ran complex computer simulations, literally simulating millions of raindrops hitting a human-shaped object at different speeds and wind directions. The results were clear. In most real-life conditions, running winds. But small details like your body shape, your posture, or whether you have a tailwind or a headwind can flip the result. The thing is that those results were based on actual experiments, but there was no way of unifying them with equations. So after decades of practical experiments, nobody could mathematically find the best option, until a physicist decided to stop running in the rain and start running the math. In 2012, Italian physicist Franco Bocci decided to model the problem from scratch. He published the most complete analysis ever. To cut through the chaos, he simplified the human body shape to a simple rectangular box. This simplification allowed him to prove the point mathematically. The time you save by running almost always cancels out the few extra drops you hit head on. His main takeaway was clear. In general, the best thing to do is run as fast as you can. Bocci's math also covered wind, and this is where things get quite juicy. If you're running into the wind, the rule is easy. Run as fast as you possibly can. The headwind is already soaking you from the front, so just get out of the time-dependent vertical rain faster. But if the wind is really pushing the rain with you, things get complicated. Bocci found that if the wind is coming exactly from behind, the perfect speed to stay driest is the speed of the wind itself. Why? Because if you match the wind's speed, you're essentially moving in still air relative to the rain. The drops aren't crashing into you from the side at all. You just deal with the rain falling from the top, run faster than the wind, and you start hitting the drops the wind was helping you avoid. So in the end, all the equations, experiments, and theories agree on one simple thing. The faster you get out of the rain, the drier you'll stay. Sure, there are edge cases. Tailwinds, body shapes, weird angles. And for all you know, you could even slip into a puddle and make all those theories useless. But look, don't make it complicated. You definitely don't need to stand there calculating any math. Basically, as a wise wizard once said, Fly, you fools!